Hey guys, it's Kudasai coming at you with more interactive horror stories. Now, so far, we have finished The Doll, After Funeral, Crystal Skull, Evil Beneath the Ground, and now we are moving on to Crystal Skull 2. I'm guessing that part 2 is like a sequel to Crystal Skull, and Crystal Skull was about how my daughter Juliana was sick, I think. She had some sort of disease. I was the king, and I touched a skull. No, I didn't touch the skull. I made my daughter touch the skull. And she, in the end, killed me. She smothered my face with a pillow, and that was the end of the king. She's, she was like, long live the king! The king must die! Completely contradicting herself. And here we are. So, I'm guessing that this is... Oh, this time I'm not a king? Oh, wait. So is this some sort of, like, parallel universe where I didn't die? Uh, alright. We're just gonna... Go jump right in let's see how this one goes so this time you are not a king but a liber libertine billionaire i don't is that liber libert oh libertine i i don't know where i got the m i am dyslexic i have <laughs> I, I confused the n for an m okay libertine if i'm saying that right i'm hoping i am billionaire in the modern age historical artifacts are one of your vo vices oh my god a marvelous crystal skull is brought to your mansion, and the interesting part is, you can hear the skull's voice in your mind. You can talk with it. So I'm a psychic? Okay. That's pretty cool. It says that it will bring you joys no mortal can ever reach, but it demands something first. Uh, my soul? It wants my soul? Oh yeah, I forgot last time I did this in a, in a really cheap, corny British accent. I'm not gonna do that this time because it kinda killed the mood. So I'm just, I'm just gonna read this normally. So, you consider yourself a lucky man. You are a European billionaire in his 30s. I, I am young. Jeez, a, a billionaire in my 30s? That's incredible. Good job, me. Good job. After the recent death of your father, your mother died a long time ago. You inherited the family manor and company. You are also single and handsome. Good to know. That is very, very useful information for me to know. Thank you. I'm single and I am, and I am handsome. I thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes, you are a lucky. <laughs> okay, you are a, you are a lucky son of a bitch. I am not a cursor, guys. Just letting you know. As a libertine, I hope I'm saying that right because if that word appears more than once, I'm gonna be screwed. As a libertine or libertine, I don't know. I'm gonna say libertine. Whatever. You have indulged in many vices. Those we can't mention because of censorship. <laughs> you have never harmed anyone against her will, though. Her? Wait. Wait, what? You have never harmed anyone? Okay, whatever. But all these wild experiences couldn't slake your thirst. You want to taste what was not tasted before. Conquer the unconquered. Alright, I don't know who her is. I Probably the spirit who's possessing- or who inhabits the skull. Nowadays, you have a new interest. Historical artifacts. Prehistoric vases? No. You don't like- or bases, whatever. You don't like boring things. You own Alexander the Great Sword, which he used in cutting the Gordian Knot. What a guy! Look at- look at me! Look at me! I got Alexander the Great Sword? I am a beast! I am incredible! Wow. I gotta give myself kudos for that. Kudos! Kudos to me! I own Alexander the Great Sword. Good old Alex's sword. Okay. I'll take it. You didn't obtain it in legal ways, but uh, but that doesn't matter to you. Of course it doesn't. I'm amazing. Who does? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And you seek more. I seek more. More, I say. Anyway, it's a summer night. Your smartwatch shows 111. All your six servants are asleep in their rooms. That's the way you like it. You don't like being disturbed by their presence at night. You want to be alone at this at this hour, so while enjoying your malt whiskey, you are in front of your laptop in your study room, checking social media. Wait. Okay, so this is like the present. Is this the present? Because I was thinking when I went to this, when I went into this, that this was gonna be around the 1700s, medieval days or something. Okay, it's recent. This is pretty, pretty recent. Within the, um, within the, these pra these past, within these past couple decades. Yes, even billionaires, billionaires do it. With a glass of whiskey and Cuban cigars. You remember that you haven't checked your emails for a while. There are six unread emails. Four of them are business mails. Mails. Okay. One of them is from your friend Phil, another rich man. 
You will love this, is the subject of the mail. The last one is from Bill, an artifact smuggler. Crystal Skull, he says in the subject. So I can read the business mails, I can read my friend's mail, I can read the smuggler's mail, or I can just go right to bed and worry, not have to worry about any of this. Uh, business, friends, what do I want? I mean, I would, just because they're my friends, I think I would read the friend's mail first. I will love this. Okay, surprise me. Surprise me. The mail consists of a single image. It belongs to a creepy clown with sharp teeth and a hideous smile on his white face. Low-key lighting and the blood that spills from his mouth makes the image even more disturbing. You have a phobia of clowns and Phil knows it very well. How dare you? Yeah, that's right. Fridge you. Fridge you too. Reply. <laughs> don't reply to the, Don't reply the mail. You know what? No. I am offended by that. How dare you know that I have a fear, I have a phobia of clowns, yet you said that I would love this? Uh, obviously I did not. So, for all you do, there are 500 emails. Okay, just gonna leave it at that. Hope I don't get a reply. There are 500 emails, four of them are business mails, okay. Uh, I'll read the smuggler's mail because who cares about business? Business can wait, it's fine. I have to show you this, Bill says. I have to read this in like a texting accent or a texting voice. I have to show you this, Bill says. The skull is made of pure crystal and nobody knows where it's from. You won't believe its story. He has taken a photo of the skull with his phone. The fluorescent light in his room is weak, but somehow the skull is clearly visible in the photo. Despite the quality of the photo, the skull looks amazing with its shiny material. You have seen enough crystal jewelry to know that Bill isn't showing something fake here. Let me bring it to your place. What will be your response? Bring it to the mansion. I'm not interested. Of course I'm interested. I am a historian, I think. Who likes skulls? Okay, there are four. Uh, read the business. Wait for the smuggler. I mean, while I'm waiting, I guess I might as well read the business mails. So these mails are from your employees. They inform you the painkiller medi medicine that your enterprise produces can't be sold in Sweden anymore. Aw, why not? You are too drunk to handle the situation right now. This medicine ban is not such an important loss for your enterprise anyway. You produce and export many other products. What a dude. What a prepared dude. Okay. So you turn your computer off and start waiting for Bill. Fifteen minutes later, your phone rings. This The melody is Amaro Mio by Pink Martini. I don't know that song, if it's actually a song. It shows Bill as the caller. Okay. Hello? You pick up your phone and answer the call. Hey, it's me, dude, Bill says on the phone. Looking out the window, you see him standing in the doorway. I didn't want to wake, to wake your people up. Open the door for me, will ya? Okay. Leave your study room, descend, descend the stairs, your study room is at the third floor of the mansion, and open the huge wooden door of the mansion. Bill smiles at you. It is nice to see you again. I am sure you'll love what I've got here. Oh, wait, I have, to, I have to say this casually. It's nice to see you again. I'm sure you'll love what I've got here. Something like that. He shows you his full khaki sports bag. Let's move on to the, let's move on the study room. Okay. You climb up the stairs to your study room as Bill follows you. After you reach there, Bill closes the door of the study room and pulls the artifact from his bag. Bill puts the crystal skull on your desk with a confident smile on his face. Oh god, you have seen many things in your life, but this skull is one of the prettiest one one ever. The skull is made of pure crystal and what kind of crystal? Quartz? Hmm. And all the details of a human skull is imprinted. Imprinted? Uh, okay. It, it refracts, refracts the lights of the room with elegance. How beautiful. Bill is ready to answer your questions. Okay, well, alright. How did you obtain it? Who crafted this and when? How much do you want? <laughs> yeah, how much do you want? I'll give you 20. Maybe 30? No, you want 30? No, 40. 40. Make it 45. Going once? No. Going twice? No. So No, just kidding. Thanks, but I'm not buying it. How much do you want? I mean, as a billionaire, that's probably the first thing I'd say. Actually, I wouldn't even say how much do you want. I would just say, I'll give you, I'll give you 50. Give me 50. Without, like, even worrying about how much he wants. How much, no, how did you obtain it? I mean, that's the most logical question to ask first. Who crafted this? That's something that I'll save for later. How did you obtain it? I was afraid you'd ask that, because you won't believe me. After a long pause, Bill continues. It is brought to me by a, dry, by a diver who dived in the sea in the seashore. He said that he started hearing voices inside his head when he was in the sea. Find me, the voices told him. He swam to the direction of the voices and found a floating bag. It is strange. You'd expect a skull like this should have been sunk. But it was floating. And the rest of the story is even stranger. Oh? 
After he found the bag with the skull, he continued hearing voices. They gave him my phone number. He told me he would never do any illegal shield. It was like giving a historical artifact to a smuggler, but he couldn't disobey his voices. And you would and you won't believe me, but when I touched the skull, I began seeing shields language. Beautiful shields. I saw myself drink too hot boils. Can you believe it, dude? Bullshniz! This is total bullshniz! I believe in you. Bullshniz! I don't expect you to believe me anyway, but if you, you but you should touch the skull too. Come on, touch it. Of course, touch it, man. Touch it! Touch it! Okay. You approach the skull and touch it with your bare hand, and the vision starts. Okay, I shouldn't have done that. You are something magnificent, definitely not a human anymore. Something way beyond human, a cosmic entity. I have become a divine god. That's what I am. You are omni- What? What a- an, What a narcissistic, self-centered, conceited fool. I mean, I'm rich, but you know, money can't buy every- money can't save me from this. Okay, whatever. You are omniscient. You can see and hear the whole universe. No secrets are kept from you. You are inside the every mind that exists on Earth. Wow. Now you see yourself in the form of a human. You are at the top of a hill under the sun. You are not alone. There are millions of people around the hill. They are all naked and on their knees. They chant your name. You know they are yours. Again! The last story I read, the, um, the evil beneath the ground or something, there were naked- everyone was naked for some reason? What is with these stories and naked people? They're not scary! What, are, what am I, like a deity and these are all of my followers? Why I didn't tell them to strip down for me? I never told them to strip. Just putting that out there, I never told them that. That was something that they did of their own free will. And the vision ends. It feels like you hit the ground when you were flying high in the heavens. You find yourself touching the skull and Bill is looking at you with a smile. I told you, he says, that skull is magical. Bill is ready to answer your questions. Okay, who crafted this and when? How much do you want? <laughs> Thanks, but I'm not buying you know who crafted this. I want to know. I have no idea. The skull is found in a bag in the sea. Is found? Okay. I think you mean past tense, but I'm not gonna question it. It resembles nothing I've ever sold or heard. I didn't even know that it was possible to craft a baby like this. Look at it. Isn't it wonderful? Baby? Uh, how do you know it's a baby? I mean, of course, if the skull was tiny, it would probably be a baby's, but... I don't know if he knows that. How much do you want? <laughs> of course, how much do you want? I'll give you 50. Make it 60. If you want 60, I will give you 60. 1 million euros. Okay, that's... Mm, that sounds reasonable. Normally, I would sell by auction, but really, I don't want to keep this thing. I feel like I can lose it if I keep it for more than a few hours. You had bought much more boring things for higher prices. Yeah, I bought- I bought myself a new car, I got myself- I got myself, like, 20 acres of an estate, I got myself land, I got myself, um, got myself a million dollar bottle of whiskey- I meant million euro- million and a half- 1.5 million euro bottle of whiskey, I got myself some, uh, some, uh, what else did I get? Got myself a lynx coat. Got myself a bear carpet, got myself a coon hat, got myself all of those things, all for over a million euros. It's fine. That's enough. I want to buy it. I think I'm not buying it. Ah! Uh, I want to buy it. Gimme. Give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Bill smiles. Great. Make, make the money transfer and the skull is yours. Transfer a million euros to Bill. You open your computer once again. Of course, you don't use banks for illegal stuff like that. Instead, you open for bit, your Bitcoin account. Oh, wow. Impressive, impressive. How much Bitcoin you got, huh? With a few clicks, all the money is sent to the smuggler. It doesn't take long for Bill's phone beep. He looks up to his phone, smiles. It was a good deal, dude. He waves at you while leaving the study room with his empty bag. If you want anything, you know whom to call. Soon you hear Bill's car leaving the mansion. Now you are alone in your study room with a skull. Touch the skull. That's the only option I've got, so I might as well touch it. As you touch the skull, something strange happens. All the lights in the room go off. But the crystal starts to shine and emit white light, illuminating the room. You hear a voice, male or female? You can't figure it out in your mind. Greetings, oh, greetings, mortal. You feel the skull gazes into your soul. Uh, I can hear you. Talk to me. 
Who are you? What are you? Are you stuck in this crystal skull? Do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. Do you know who I am? Yes, I know who you are. Like I know everything else. You are a billionaire who is afraid of clowns and hasn't heard this, his fortune with his hard work. You want to taste all kinds of joy on earth. I can give you what you want. It was not a, co a coincidence that the diver and Bill brought me to you. Yes, I can give you what you want. You can give me anything I want. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge, touch, touch, puck, puck. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, are you stuck in this crystal skull? I see, hear, and know everything. My existence is far beyond this material skull. Okay. Who are you? I've got many names. Zirasil is one of them. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm just gonna say Zirasil. Some perceive me as an angel, some as a demon, some as a god. The truth is, there are forces in the universe inconceivable to tiny human mind, and I am one of those forces. For ages, I have been worshipped by mankind and the entities unknown to your world. But I am forgotten. I am preparing my return. A god? I don't believe in you. I'm a bit suspicious of this. I'm a bit suspicious. <laughs> I don't need your belief. You are rich, but still mortal. I have been worshipped millennia ago, before you were born. I will still exist after your death. Your lifespan is my minute. In fact, I can kill you right now. Like a worthless insect. Do you want to die? Go ahead, try to kill me. No, no. Try to kill me. I dare you. I dare You know what? Come at me. Come at me, bro. Oh. Suddenly, you feel a tremendous agony in your whole body. It feels like a giant is stepping on you as if you were a little insect. You are also unable to breathe. You fall on the carpet with unbearable pain. You squirm and try to catch your breath, but it chokes you. After 15 seconds that felt like an eternity, it releases you. And you hear the words in your mind, I am a merciful god. How merciful indeed. Okay, what are you? You're not a god. I know you're not. Wrong question. It's who, not what. Oh. So I got it right the first time. Okay, what will you what will what will you give me? You are stuck in a mortal human body. You can be a cosmic entity like me. You will know everything, be ageless, immortal, and worshipped. But I demand something first. How will I be worshipped if no one knows who I am? That's just a question I have. Uh, what do you demand? Sure. Ancient civiliza civilizations always offer me something valuable. They sacrifice human lives for me. I want you to kill someone innocent. No way! No way! Knowing you, you're gonna make me kill my best friend slash smuggler slash friend named Bill. And I don't agree with that. Or you may, you're actually, you know what? I think I might have an idea of who I would want to kill. Just putting that out there, bluntly. No way, I'm interested. I'm interested. Go on. No, you know what? Uh, no way. No way. No. Then I will kill you and find someone else who is not afraid to dirt his hands with blood. Dirty his hands with blood. I'm not afraid. I won't kill anybody. Uh, okay. I will do what you tell me. Uh, so I have a choice here. I could either let this divine entity kill me... Or I could let myself live. I could have him sp have it spare me. Mm. And have me do the dirty work for him. Okay. I will. Uh, your wish is my command. Okay. I know someone who you can kill. Nobody cares about the lives of prostitutes. What? Mm -hmm. Holy jeez. Dude, not cool. Not cool, dude. You will find a young girl in the alley that you always buy something. You know what it is. Her name is Nina. She has short red hair, and she is a virgin. This is going to be her first friend and last night. Her first and last night she does her job. You will recognize her when you see her. You won't need to hide anything after you sacrifice her to me, as you will be above all the law of humans. I don't think killing puts me above the law. Or, yeah, it no. Deal. <laughs> Just straight up deal. Gotcha. I'm not gonna murder anyone. Yeah, but he's gonna kill me no matter what. Should I take the the martyr route? <laughs> I'll be a martyr to save the lives of everyone else. I mean, if I haven't if I hadn't touched the skull in the first place, none none of this would have even happened. Deal. 
come on. Why? Come on, man. Why you gotta pick on? Why you gotta pick on an innocent girl? Come on. What if she was only doing that because she had no choice? Well, you never know. Ah, uh, deal. No. You know what? I think I feel like this guy's trying to mind control. Me. He's trying to use reverse psychology on me. He's trying to make me think. He's trying to make. He's like he's getting into my head. That's what he's doing. He's in my head, and if I say no. That means I'm gonna die regardless. I, I feel like either way I'm gonna die, so. And besides, I'm curious. I, I wanna know what happens, even though this is the horrible route. Guys, I'm sorry. Don't, don't think bad of me. Don't, oh no, my reputation. Deal. I, I am dealing with the devil here. I know you possess Alexander's sword and keep, and keep it in the basement alongside you, alongside with your wine bottles. I want you to kill Nina with it. Go get to your car, I am waiting. Go to my garage, okay. So you leave your study room, descend the staircase, and go to your garage where you keep your expensive cars. You have a sports car with its distinctive red color, and another black car that looks like it's a vigilante with a black costume would- that- that looks like a vigilante with a bat costume would drive. <laughs> what the- okay. Such is a billionaire's life. You can choose one of them to bring the prostitutes to your mansion. Again, I'm having second thoughts about this. Choose red car, choose black car. I mean, I might as well do this in style. I mean, she's probably gonna guess that she was kidnapped by Batman. And then she'll be like, Oh, I was, I was murdered. I was sacrificed by a hero. I was doing it for the greater good of humanity or whatever. So you get in your black car and drive to the alley that you always find your thing we won't name here. If I chose the red car, would there be a different ending? Just wondering. Despite the high horsepower of your car, you drive slowly in order to examine the people on the alley. On the alley. The alley is almost isolated. You see only a few people. You know that they don't sell legal things. And you see the silhouette of a girl with very short- with very short skirt and long legs. Clearly a prostitute. She smokes a cigarette, but she coughs with every breath she takes from it. As you approach her, you see that she has a red hair like the crystal skull described. She notices your car. Sound the horn, wait for her to approach you. What's up? What's up, girl? What's up, lady? Huh? Ladies, uh, no, that's not. Uh, I'm not the flirtatious type. She approaches your black car's window. She looks quite young and naive and cute, but you are here for something else. Um, excuse. Oh wait. Um, um, excuse me, sir. No, that's. Oh, what voice was that? Hold on. Um, excuse me, sir. She shyly talks to you. I believe that you seek some fun, don't you? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? What is this? Amateur hour? Uh, who doesn't? Should I get one just should I get one for the for the long road ahead or should I just You know, this is not what I came here for. What is this? Amateur hour? You got to be out of your mind. Uh, uh okay. No. Uh, okay. Let me get it straight. Do you want to fiolge me? <laughs> I'm sorry. For 40 euros. Oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? Guys, I'm pretty sure, if you guys haven't noticed already, I am not the type of person to say any sort of curse. So, you know, I'm just gonna... No, I'm just... No, no. Hold on, hold on. Let me... No, I'm not even gonna read that again. You know what? No, moving on anyway. Get in the car. Deal. Uh, get in the car. No. She gets in your car and sits on the seat next to you. As you start your car, she asks, Will you bring me back here after the job is done? I'm not that experienced, to be honest. Yes, I will. You're on your own. You're on your own. You're on your own. Oh, yes, I will. I promise. She smiles. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. This is gonna be horrible. You're about to arrive at the mansion. What is your name? I know your name is Nina. Why do you do this job? Yeah, why, 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 why do you? My dad is in jail. He's in a huge debt. This is the quickest way I can earn money to help him. See, I called it. I called this. She's not doing it because she wants to. She's doing it because she has no choice. So now it's just going to be... I'm just going to feel even more... I'm just going to feel even worse. Because she's doing this because she has no choice. Ah, This is going to be sad. What is your name? Don't say anything. What's your name? Doesn't matter. All names are the same. You can call me anything, but please don't- But please let it be a girl's name. I'm gonna call you Steve. <laughs> let me- Okay. Let me call you Jill. Nina then. I know your name is Nina. Uh... 
You know, don't get me wrong. Don't don't take this. Don't don't be suspicious of me just because I'm gonna uh, coincidentally call you Nina. This is just something that it was. It was just a hunch, you know. Ah, uh, that's really my name. Yeah, it is. You're about to arrive at the mansion. I know your name is Nina. No, I'm no. I'm not gonna tell her. That's gonna be. She's she's probably gonna be horrified by that time. I won't say anything. So you finally arrive your mansion. You stop the car and get off. As she gets off, she looks at your mansion with awe. Wow, it looks so pretty. It must be wonderful to live here. She follows you as you walk to the mansion and open the door. The sword is in the basement. The sword? What am I gonna do with the sword? I thought the guy, the thing, the skull spirit wanted me to use the bottle. Let me show you something more interesting. Take it to the basement without saying anything. Let me show you something more interesting, yeah. It's gonna, we're gonna have a good time. I promise you that. Definitely not gonna murder you, face. You look like a man with surprises and mystery. I loved it. Loved? I love it. Okay, that sounds better. I wonder how this night will end. Me too. Me- <laughs> Why do I say this so excitedly? Like, me too. I wonder how it will end too. You open the door that leads to the basement stairs. You turn on the lights and descend as the girl follows you. You walk past the wine casks. I'm sure that you have a good taste of wine, she says. You had hidden Alexander's sword between two casks. Now you find and pull it from the spot you hid it. You stand between her and the basement door so she can't escape from you. Oh, so we're just getting right into it. Wow, that sword looks antique. Who used to own it? Alexander the Great. Straight up Alexander. My, no. Yeah, my, my, oh, he was my uncle, of course. He was my uncle. This is my great uncle's sword. No, doesn't matter. I'll kill you with it. Uh, I was gonna murder you, but I can't. These options... These options don't really reflect my response. The closest thing... I mean, at this point, I'm pretty much driven ma mad? Question mark? I don't feel like I'm... <sighs> Maybe she can help- no, she can't help me. It doesn't matter, I'll kill you with it. Why is this such a hard choice? This is such a difficult choice. I'm not gonna say how- actually, you know what? Nope, I think when there's a tough decision, you take the middle option. Alexander the Great. Ah, is this the sword he cut the Gordian knot with? I know its story. He became the king because he thought outside of the box. He cut the knot instead of solving it by hand. I always wanted to be someone great like him, but I ended up being a prostitute. That's... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, girl, lady, Nina, Nina, I'm sorry. You'll be great after I sacrifice you. Uh, I was gonna murder you, but I can't. You'll be great after I sacrifice you. I mean, at this point... Can she redeem herself? Is it possible that she can redeem herself? And... Whoa, this is tough. You will be great after I say- <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna say this as a joke. <laughs> yeah, you will be great after I sacrifice you. She is surprised as fjolj because of your serious manner. Oh, I'm not- Oh, I'm not joking. Come on. She understands that you are not joking. Ah, uh, what? Are you gonna kill me? She gets on her knees. Please don't kill me. Why did she get on her knees? Did she get- oh. Lady! You know what? You're not redeemable. Killer, I was gonna murder you, but I can't. I mean, this is my last choice. This is the last thing. I'm, I may be a billionaire, but I have a heart. I have a heart. I have feelings. I have emotions. I cannot kill another human being without good reason. I'm sorry. I've got myself into this, and there's no way I can bring myself out of it. I'm sorry, Skull. I have let you down. You say, uh, I was gonna murder you, but, but, you can't continue your words because you start to lose control of your body. <laughs> you fall on the floor paralyzed. The sword falls with you as you no can no longer hold it. Oh, so I had no choice. Then you feel that something takes over your body. You stand up and pick the sword without your consent. You hold the sword so that it is, it is, its tip is on your belly. The position of hara, harakiri or that's- that's a Japanese thing, I'm- I'm pretty sure. Harakiri! That's what it is. Oh! Oh, jeez. Oh. 
So I'm dead. I'm dead. You stab the sword into your abdomen and fall on your knees. I saw this. I knew it was coming. The prostitute screams as you keep pulling and pushing the sword into your body till you fall on the floor. You gain control of your body once again, but it's too late. The stabs are too, are too deep and there's nothing you can do but wait for the death to come. And it comes before she can get help. The end. The end. The game has four endings. Four. Four. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to leave it at that. That was a pretty good story, I have to say. Like, I like the progression of the quality of the stories as I kept going on and on. Crystal Skull 2 was completely different from what I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be like a, like a sequel to Crystal Skull, but it wasn't. It was a completely different story in itself, and the story in itself was really interesting. I really enjoyed it. I was surprised at many points. I was, even though the, the, um, the... The choices that I could make were very limited. I did, I want like I did enjoy the result of them. So I guess I'll leave it at that. And we have two more things to go, two more stories, and then we also have the credits. I'm still looking forward to those credits. I gotta see them. I gotta see them. But anyway, I will leave it at that, and I will end it here. So if you enjoyed this video, why not give me a like and leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will put a link in the description if you want to play this game for yourself. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for joining me here. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next video. I will see you then.